An eight-legged creature that is named after a Japanese monster. Well, if it's such a monster, then why is it considered by so many to be a hero? And why would I even call it that? Find out all this and more as we cover our creepiest and crawliest creature yet, today on Laugh Pack. Oh boy, does it feel good to be back in the right hands. You know what we should do? Check to see if this still works. What's up, boss? Yeah, why are you doing the laugh back assemble cry? Oh, I just saw the sword and I thought, uh, better give it a shot. And it worked, so that's good. Yeah, but on top of having an awesome laugh pack sword to use, we had a suggestion come in for a new creature from our good friends Tamri from Kennewick and Sullivan from Spokane, Washington. And the creature is a spider. Thanks, guys. Did you say spiders? No, no, no. That's not going to happen. Oh, that's right. Kara's a little afraid of spiders. But maybe that's because people are usually just afraid of what they don't understand. Hopefully after today's episode, Cairo's gonna do a little better. I don't think you understand. I hate spiders. Well, we aren't gonna be handling any spiders here, but maybe after we go over some facts and learn a little something something, you might not be as afraid of them. Besides, the spider we are covering today is no ordinary house spider. It is known as the Parachute Spider, but the people in Japan know it by another name. The, the Joro, Joro spider. spider. The Joro Spider gets its name from the mythological demon spider that, well, does some uh, demon-type things. Now, the reason that the Japanese have given the Parachute Spider this not-so-friendly title of the Joro Spider is probably due to its intimidating size and coloring. But calling the spider a monster couldn't be further from the truth. That's true, Trin. See, arachnophobia means extreme or irrational fear of spiders. Now, not to undermine anyone's fear of these creatures, but the reason that they call it an irrational fear is pretty much due to the facts. Yes, they are creepy, and yes, they are crawly. But most spiders are also very, very small, with the average house spider being around one one millionth the size of a human. In other words, it would take one million spiders to equal the size of one person. Not only are they teeny tiny, but the fact is spiders are more scared of us than we are of them. One thing I do know is that spiders are not insects. Oh, you're right, buddy. There's something else altogether. They're arachnids. Both have segmented bodies, but insects have three parts to their body. A head, a thorax, and an abdomen. Spiders only have two. The head and the thorax are put together, which is called a cephalothorax, and they also have their abdomen. Also, both insects and arachnids have legs, but it's the number of legs that separates them. Insects have six, arachnids have eight. Oh man, I'm gonna get kicked in the face so much today. Sure, there are similarities to all spiders, but what makes the Joro spider, aka the parachute spider, different? And why is this arachnid such a oh, yeah. hero in so many people's eyes? Let's find out with some feature facts. <laughs> Now, females are much bigger than males, with the average size of one of these spiders being about three to four inches across from arm tip to arm tip. That's about the size of an adult palm, just to give you an idea. That is a notable difference from the size of the common household spider, which is about three sixteenths of an inch to five sixteenths of an inch. Hey, who you calling small? You wanna go, little man? Female Joro spiders have a one inch long body that is blue gray and yellow in color with little red markings on their abdomen. <laughs> but the color doesn't stop there because their long legs are black with a bunch of yellow bands on them. 
Males, like I said, are a little smaller and mostly just a brownish color. Um, yes, dear. I'll, I'll get started on whatever you want. <laughs> just please don't eat me. If you do have one of these spiders on your property, don't worry. They only live about 12 months. So you've got a year to hang out with this roommate. Parachute. Well, hello, Professor Glasses here, and word on the web, ho, <laughs> ho, you see what I did there? <laughs> well, word on the web is that you want to learn about how the Joro spider gets around and sticks around using his web. Well, I say we spider leap right into it. Let me show you something. Now, the Joro spider's webbing is quite unique and different from other spiders. While the typical spider web is a nice drab white, the Joro spider's is a little classier, if you know what I mean. Hello, Gabna. It's typically a golden color, and it has even brighter yellowish shine in the sunlight. This little web of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. It's this golden web that allows them to sometimes travel up to a hundred miles. Excuse me, can I buy an airline ticket for a hundred miles round trip using this golden thread? Why, of course. Perfect. Sucker doesn't even know it wasn't real gold. Okay, so maybe they don't buy airplane tickets to get around. Let me tell you how it is done. The Joro spider is known for spinning large, intricate, wheel-shaped webs which work like parachutes. Do you get it? That's why they're called the parachute spiders. The process of the webs flying through the air is commonly known as ballooning and sometimes called kiting. These parachutes the spiders make can be lifted into the air by gusts of wind. Researchers say this allows these critters to travel to different locations miles and miles away. So there you go. The way these little spiders get around is by sticking their keisters in the air and letting the wind carry it where it may. Talk about a leap of faith. Location. The Joro spider is native to China, India, Japan, North Korea, South Korea, Taiwan, and Vietnam. Oh man, Fred's at it again. But it doesn't just stop there. Lucky us. Its first confirmed sighting here in the United States was in Georgia around 2013. Scientists believe the spider hitchhiked on a shipping container or in a potted plant that originated from Japan. Eh, it's a little bit of both. <laughs> but Georgia isn't the only state it's been seen. Again, lucky us. This spider has also been spotted in North Carolina, South Carolina, and Tennessee during recent years. One Joro spider was even found in Oklahoma, but it didn't get there via the usual ways of transportation. No, sir. It got there by hitching a ride on a car that was coming from Georgia. Man, Uber will transport anyone these days. <laughs> You know what time it is. It's time for something crazy! Here's something crazy for you. Since coming to the U.S. of A. America, America. The Juro spider has multiplied really fast. Females are able to drop sacks of 400 to... 1,500 eggs in bushes and trees. Hatching in the spring, hatchlings hitchhike and spread, often using the old parachute trick to get around. Now, as intimidating as the size of the Joro spider might be, it's relatively harmless. Though they can release venom through a bite, these spiders aren't aggressive. 
In fact, these spiders are so not aggressive that they can share territory with other Joro spiders, causing there to be quite a large community at times. Good for them, annoying to those who don't want to walk in their webbing. Bite. Now, because these creatures have such tiny little fangs, and because, like I said, they're not aggressive, these Joro spiders are relatively harmless to people and their pets making their presence more of a nuisance than a danger. Joro spiders won't attack or bite you unless they are cornered. So just leave them alone and they'll leave you alone. Nobody puts daddy long leg in the corner. On top of that, their fangs are so tiny, like I said, that they're not big enough to break human skin. Ergo, because they are not aggressive, they can't bite you even if they wanted to. It's okay to marvel at their beautiful coloring from a distance. All right, all right. Food. Now, for those of you who do not like wasps or hornets, these spiders are your euros. The Joro spider tends to eat various insects, including stink bugs, wasps, hornets, yellow jackets, and mosquitoes. All those bugs I just mentioned are so unpleasant that most of the spiders won't even come near them. But the Joro spider thinks it's a tasty meal. Well, honey, it looks like you caught us their meal again. <laughs> Please don't eat me. The one bummer is that they also eat ladybugs, which uh, I kind of like. But it doesn't stop there. The Joro spider has also been feasting upon a insect that has been threatening grapevines, vineyards, and certain trees in New Jersey and other eastern states for a very long time, known as the spotted lanternfly. That's right, lanternfly, wasps, hornets, and yellow jackets, we're sending in the big guns. Or should I say eight of uh, eight, eight really small guns? Dangers. Now, when does the hunter become the hunted? Well, for Joro spiders, it's kind of a hit and miss. Some birds will go after Joro spiders, but there's not one specific species that prefers them. Oh, oh was that a Joro? I'm disgusting. While they may be eaten by other animals that eat insects and spiders, they don't have a specific predator that seeks them out. Maybe it's because all the other animals respect them for taking care of all those wasps and hornets. Grab a bubble because it's about to shake like a bowl full of jelly. It's jerk time. It's joke time. Joke number one. Why did the spider team get in trouble with his mom? He spent too much time on the web. <laughs> and look number two. What happened when a man bit into a sandwich with a daddy long leg in it? It became a daddy short leg. <laughs> And there it is. One more episode done and another creature covered. Thanks again, Tammy and Sullivan, for such an amazingly cool beast. You know what? Spiders are actually pretty cool. It may take me some time to get close to one, but at least I can be in the same room as them now. That's the spirit. You know, it's baby steps, buddy. Or should I say, spider steps. <laughs> And speaking of which, their webbing is so cool. I mean, it's golden. Yeah, and how cool is it that they use it to parachute? Wow! And the fact that they eat wasps is super great for me. It's a never-ending battle. And on that last note, thanks for watching, everyone. And if you like this show, smash that like button. Hit subscribe and that bell so you don't miss another episode. If you have any questions or ideas for a future episode, leave them in the comments below. And share the show with your family and friends so you can enjoy it together. Thanks for watching. And we'll see you next time on Lapa. <laughs>
Let's turn on Laugh Pack. You know what a demon is, you should give me a call and let me know what's up. The Toronto Spider has multiplied really fast. Really fast? That's not a Okay, word. last might be a word. But at least I could have been the same. I said, I said Yeah, you did. Ready? Whoopsies! Whoopsies. 